Hey guys, my name is Andrew. I'm here with Patrick Butler, and we're going to talk to you about credit, everything you need to know about it, how to build it, and how to crash it at the same time. So Patrick is someone who's had a lot of experience with credit as well as myself. Patrick, uh, what's what's the reason why credit is so important? Why do people care about their credit score? Well, your credit is going to determine a lot about your financial future, uh, especially when you go to make a big purchase or if you want to move. Uh, if you want to move into an apartment, you know you need to pass a credit check. If you want to get a car, you either need to uh, do a credit check for a lease or uh, get approved for a loan. And your credit is going to determine, you know, your interest rate, and that will ultimately determine, you know, how much extra you're paying for a loan. Or eventually down the road, when you go to buy a house, uh, it's also absolutely important that you have good credit. And the worst thing is that nobody typically learns about credit until it's too late until they've uh, missed a payment or done something that's gonna damage their score for five to seven years. And then you're just gonna be kicking yourself wishing that you knew this information ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can tell, if you don't even have a 650 credit score, you can't even get solar. So you can see how important it is to have at least a minimum or a, a medium ranking credit score. Pat, what's, what's the number one way that you see people tank their credit or just have bad credit? The absolute number one thing is people miss a payment. So I can't tell you how many of my friends have opened a credit card, whether that's just like, you know, you're standing in line at Macy's and they're like, hey, you want 25% off? Just run your credit real quick. And, you know, you open a Macy's card or a Best Buy card, something like that to put a purchase on to save you a little bit up front. Then you forget about that card. You forget about that payment. And next thing you know, if, if you miss a payment, you have 30 days to make that payment before it's reported to a credit uh, bureau and as soon as that happens that derogatory mark is going to show up on your score for seven years and I see that happen to people all the time I've and it usually doesn't the, the, the biggest tragedy is it's usually more than just one missed payment I've had friends that have missed 12 payments straight because they just completely forgot about the card so just imagine how much that will tank your score and how irreversible that is and if you do tank your score you have a bad say you just have a bad credit score um, is it the end of the world for you, or can you build it back somehow? So it depends on the way that you damage your score. So if it's a derogatory mark, like I said, it's going to take seven years to bring it back. Uh, if it's, you know, there are other things that will affect your credit history and your credit score. Um, so one is the credit history. It's the length of time that you've had credit. Uh, and that, you know, you want to start your credit history at a, the age of 18. If you're 18 years old and you don't have a credit card or you don't have any sort of credit history established yet, I would highly recommend you, you know, you get that started because it takes at least five years before, uh, of having credit history before it starts positively affecting your score. So even now I'm at like four and a half years of having credit. Uh, and you know, I wish I, you know, started on my 18th birthday with credit so that I would be farther along by now. Um, the other thing is, you know, credit utilization. Uh, that's something that will, could temporarily drag down your score. So, they recommend that you don't put over 30% of a balance on any one of your credit cards. So if you have a $1,000 balance or available balance on a credit card, you don't want to use over $300 at a time uh, in order to keep your score high. Uh, the good thing is that if you, you know, do hit, you know, if you get that, if you max out that $1,000 and you're making your minimum payments every single month, you can maintain your score by not missing any payments or having any late payment history. Uh, but it's going to drag your score down slowly. But if you pay off that full thousand dollars or get it under that thirty percent threshold, uh, then your credit will bounce back and recover. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And I think where a lot of people go wrong is they think that their minimum payment is all that they'll ever have to pay, or they they see a credit card as free money. Guys, a credit card is not free money. It's it's the opposite of free money. It's it's think about it like a lien on yourself. So uh, something that really helped me build up my credit score, and I have a seven eighty seven right now is I treated my credit card like a debit card. With a debit card, as soon as you pay the money, it's out. So it, the only difference is that with a credit card, you have a month to pay it back. So I don't pay my minimum credit or my minimum payments. I pay it all off in full. So I'll show you just an example of what it's going to look like. You should all get a credit card, maybe even a cash back type of credit card. Uh, that way you get some sort of bonuses for it. It's kind of fun. And then every single month, you, get the, you have the app and you can kind of see what you owe. So here's what it's going to look like. And Jimmy, let me know if you can't see this. But uh, so here's this month, it's December. So you can see it's looking, uh, looking nice and high. 
$10,539 is what I'll have to pay this month, not 38. Okay, there's a big, big difference there. All right, and then say you want to see your credit score, you would just go to something like services is why the app is cool, and you'll, you'll just see it pull up. So you could always know where you're at, and um, just doing this over time, like I remember this was at 750 or 760 about a year ago. Nothing's changed, I haven't missed any payments. I've just been paying my bills on time for another year, and now my credit score has gone up. And this is gonna allow me to, say I ever wanna take out a loan to make an investment, or I just wanna get a really low rate on a new car, I have all the credibility in the world. So keep your credit high, uh, treat your credit card like a debit card, and remember, it's not free money. This is money that you will need to pay back, and you need to pay it back at the end of the month. Yeah, That's I got, all. A, I got a question for you, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, if you spend two thousand dollars on a credit card, how much money do you have to earn to pay it back? If you don't pay it back on time, it's going to cost you a lot. That's the thing. Uh, is how, how much would you guess? Like a dollar. It's about twenty percent, right? If you don't pay it back on time. So this is a, something that this is a lesson I always like to teach people because I I just recently realized this and it really blew my mind. Because if you spend $2,000 on a credit card, you might think it's going to take $2,000 of income to pay that off. Uh, you have to keep in mind that you get taxed on income. So if you have uh, $2,000 in credit cards to pay, it's going to take you almost $4,000 of earned money to be able to put into that because of how much you get taxed on your income. Uh, so you know it's a really deep hole when you start digging yourself into it. And that's not even including the interest rate that you might have on a credit card. and like we talked about before, mm -hmm. you know, having a good credit score is going to help you with interest rates. So the better your score, the lower you're able to get your interest rates down so that borrowing money from a credit uh, a credit card or a bank is a lot cheaper to do. And it'll help you, you know, in the long run. Mm -hmm. But yeah, using a credit card, it's extremely smart to do. You, you want to not just use a debit card when you know you're going to pay it off at the end of the month. Build, build up your credit by using a debit card, but use it responsibly. Always pay it off on time so you don't have to endure that crazy interest rate. That's where the credit card really makes their money and everything will be good. And you'll be able to take out any loan you want and make any investment you want. And it's, uh, it's a good thing to have in your life. Because once you, it's a lot like identity theft. Once you have bad credit, you're probably not getting good credit. It's gonna be really hard to get it back. I also recommend for people, if you're a little bit nervous, a lot of people don't trust themselves with the credit card. That's why they haven't gotten one yet. They're like, oh, I don't wanna, you know, I know I, I wouldn't be good with that. Uh, start small, just put some monthly payments that you know or you're gonna pay every single month, like a gym membership or even just mm -hmm. Netflix, onto a credit card. Make it something small so that you're making those payments every month uh, and staying active on that credit card because if you don't use a card for 12 months and you have no balance on it, they usually shut down your account. And another factor that's gonna affect your credit score in the long run is how many open accounts you have. And it sounds like, hey, if I have three credit cards, I probably have a good credit score. Uh, or that's probably positively affecting me, it's actually not. You want over 11 accounts open before it starts positively affecting your score. So you, it is really critical to understand that developing your credit score is really, it's a long, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You're never gonna have, you know, you come out of the gate, they give you a pretty good odds. You know, once you get your first card, you usually start out around a 650. Um, but if you wanna get to that, the highest tier, the, the 850, uh, you really want to look at it like a marathon. Make sure you make all your payments for years and years and years and slowly accumulate new credit accounts so that you know, 10 years after you know, you've started your credit history, uh, you have just impeccable credit and that's gonna open a lot of doors for you. Again, when you're looking to make those major purchases in life like a new car or uh, you know, a mortgage on a home, it could be the difference between uh, you know, a 2% interest rate and a 10% interest rate, which, you know, on the value of a home, if you're talking, you know, between 250000 to $500,000, you can do the math on how much that's going to affect you, mm -hmm. how much that will affect your monthly mortgage payment. Um, so just keep those things in mind. And Well, one last thing that's kind of fun, sure. too. I, I'm the guy that always puts the car down on the table because I do have the good credit, really so good I, I can do that. And um, it's like the rich keep getting richer, the poor keep getting poorer. I keep getting a higher and higher credit score, but also I get cash back rewards. So ever since we've been in SunGrade, every time that we have a table at a club or, or, or a hotel penthouse or anything like that, um, I'm always putting it on my card. Everyone hopefully pays me back. Even if they don't pay me back, some of the people though, which inevitably happens, no matter what I'm getting rewards for it. So if you see here, 
right now I've built up uh, $438 in cash rewards, which is literally free money. I would have paid this money anyway for the tables, for the dinners, for the gifts to my team, anything like that. So this is just money that I got just for simply paying my bill. So once you are responsible with your money and pay it off like a debit card, you're just gonna end up getting free money with it. And I use a city double cash, so I really like that card. I highly recommend it. You get 2% cash back on everything that you buy. So it's just a free 2% money for, for just uh, doing nothing. Just, just so. to add to that, um, you know, Andrew here, he's very responsible. He'll, he'll pay it off. A lot of, this is one of the biggest novice credit mistakes you can make is putting your card down because you have the available balance. And then, you know, all your buddies pay you for that meal that you had. And somehow that money just doesn't quite make it over to your credit card. And I was, I was a victim of that for sure. When I first started, uh, you know, with credit cards, I remember the first time I got a large credit limit, it was from Chase. Uh, they gave me $5,000 balance. All of a sudden, you know, I threw a 80 inch TV on there and, uh, you know, took all the payments from my buddies and then, you know, Hey, I could use this cash for, you know, my rent. I could use this cash for, you know, my car payment. And, you know, I'll just, I'll just hover, you know, I'll keep my balance on my chase. I don't have to pay that off right away. So, you know, then, then next thing you know, you just, you just have like thousands of dollars on yeah. a car that you, you know, don't really have a plan to pay off. And, uh, that's usually one of the biggest things that people run into when they're brand new with credit is, is not being responsible enough to move that cash over to the card and making sure that, you know, you don't spend it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I honestly fell into that trap, you know, <laughs> time and time again. And I was actually, at one point, I had about $10,000 in credit card debt. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I had five different accounts. And the, the there was times when it was almost impossible to make the minimum payment. But I was very aware that you can never miss a payment. So for over a year, I made five minimum payments every single month. Uh, and those are my top priority. The second I got a paycheck from my job, it was paying off all those payments just to keep my credit. What integrity. kind of interest were you paying on that? Oh, I, if I did the math, I'd cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cause when you, <laughs> when, when you, uh, when you max out a card to you, not only are your minimum payments high, uh, but you're light, you're likely just paying for interest. You're, you're not even paying the actual balance. So it was almost like I'm making these minimum payments just to the bank just so they don't damage my credit. And it took to getting to the point of, uh, you know, earning enough capital at some point to be able to actually pay those down. You know, don't get me wrong, uh, you can look at it like, you know, it's, I looked at it like it was a fire under my ass to make me work harder to earn more income so that I could actually pay this stuff off. Uh, and, you know, it worked eventually when I came out here at SunGrade, I finally found myself in a commission-based position where I could actually earn enough income to pay off all those cards. And let me tell you, I learned my lesson then, and it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. But to this day, I have never missed a payment. I have 100% credit history, and, and it's not an easy thing to do, but mm -hmm. do not miss a payment. If there's one thing you get out of this entire video, it's do not miss a payment, whatever mm -hmm. you do. Yep. It's a, it's a debit card that has perks. That's it. Follow that rule, you'll be good.